In this video, we'll examine the problem of a pendulum attached to a cart. The cart, which is this rectangular object, has mass capital M and is attached by a linear spring to a fixed surface. The spring has stiffness K. Um, the pendulum has mass little m and is attached to the cart by a massless rigid rod of length L. And gravity is present in the problem. Uh, we're also given the coordinate system x as being downward, and we can assume that x is the displacement from its equilibrium position. I can explain a bit more about that later, but fundamentally it means we can ignore the weight of this system. don't want to confuse you with that now. Maybe I'll have another video that explains that. In addition, the rotation of the pendulum from its vertical position is denoted theta, where theta is positive in the counterclockwise direction. I've gone ahead and drawn my axes, my unit vectors here, E sub x and E sub y. And the reason E sub x is downwards is we were told that x is downwards. So it shouldn't be a big deal as long as we're consistent, but effectively uh, we have rotated our coordinate system by about by 90 degrees in the clockwise direction. Um, I just wanted to point that out. It shouldn't provide any problems as long as we're consistent with the way we work this. So the first thing we want to do is consider the x position of the mass, of the pendulum mass, little m. I'll call that x sub little m is equal to, it's equal to x plus L times cosine of theta. And let me just draw this here. That's the pendulum. Um, if this is L and this is theta, then this is L sine theta at the bottom, and this vertical distance is L cosine of theta. Oops, I just don't know how that crept in there. Let's erase it. Okay, so if I take the time, let me get rid of that dot to clean it up a bit. All right, so to find the velocity in the x direction, which is the vertical direction, I remind you, uh, we take the time derivative. So x dot m is equal to x dot minus L theta dot, whoops, sine theta. Similarly, y of m, the y coordinate of the pendulum, is just L times sine of theta. So therefore, the velocity in the y direction, y dot, is the time derivative of this, and that is L times theta dot cosine of theta. In addition, uh, we want to get a, a expression for this value h, the height of the pendulum as it deflects. Um, well, the height of the pendulum is just its initial x position. So h is equal to the initial x position, which is x plus l minus x plus l cosine of theta, which can be rewritten as... L into 1 minus cosine of theta. Okay, we'll call this 1, call this 2, we'll call this 3. So in order to solve this problem using Lagrange's equations to get the equations of motion, we first of all look at the potential of the system V. The potential of the system is 1 half times kx squared plus mg times h, which we've said is L into 1 minus cosine of theta. And based on our assumption that x is about the equilibrium position, we do not need this term. Let me just write it here, mention again that we do not need this term m plus m times g times x. It would actually be negative x we can ignore that because we're assuming that x is uh, the deflection from its static equilibrium position. In other words, due to the weight of the system, the spring initially will deflect by an amount delta to compensate the weight of the system. Again, I don't want to confuse you here. I'll do that in a different video. Okay, and we'll call this number 4. So the kinetic energy, T, is equal to 1 half times the mass of the cart, one half mass times x dot squared plus one half 
times the small mass, the mass of the pendulum, times the velocity of the pendulum squared, which is um, x dot m squared plus y dot m squared, um, which equals 1 half big M x dot squared plus 1 half little m times, and then this is, uh, let me put a square bracket here, um, this is x dot minus l theta dot sine theta quantity squared plus l theta dot cosine theta quantity squared. Um, multiplying this out, we get this is equal to one half um, again big M x dot squared plus one half little m times x dot squared minus two l x dot theta dot sine of theta plus l squared theta dot squared uh, let's couple this as sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta. Okay, we all I've done is I've multiplied, I've squared these and multiplied it out in group terms that were the same in this case here. Okay, um, let me change color for this. We know from trig identities that sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1, so we can just ignore that. Therefore, we can rewrite this in a slightly more compact form as this is equal to one half big M plus little m x dot squared plus one half m l squared theta dot squared minus two cancels the half m l x dot theta dot sine of theta um, and that's it m dot x dot correct okay so this we'll call equation number five let me just double check that yes that's correct all right we also know that l is equal to t minus v so we know that it's equal to uh, one half m plus m x dot squared plus one half m l squared theta dot squared minus m l x dot theta dot sine of theta minus and then from the top uh, one half k x squared this is now from the potential minus one half k x squared minus m g l into one minus cosine of theta we'll call that equation six Okay, so we have our Lagrangian, which is equation 6. All that remains is to substitute this into Lagrange's equations, and from there we'll derive the equations of motion. Do that on the next page. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've written equation 6, the Lagrangian again, on this page, so we have it for reference. And then let me write out Lagrange's equations. Lagrange's equations... And that says that the time derivative, d by dt, of partial of the Lagrangian with respect to the generalized velocity, i, minus partial of the Lagrangian with respect to the generalized coordinate, i, whoops, not dot, 
generalized coordinate i, is equal to the generalized force q sub i. Okay, in this case, the generalized force is zero. We can just get rid of that. And we'll call this equation seven. And all that remains is to substitute equation six into equation seven. So equation six into equation seven. All right, and the first equation, assuming that q1 is equal to the coordinate x, uh, I'm going to do it in steps. So this says the time derivative d by dt of the derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to x dot i. So it's the derivative of m plus m uh, x dot. Now, the only other term that has x dot in it is this term, the third term. So this would be minus m l theta dot sine of theta. And then the derivative minus the derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to x. Well, the only term that has x in it is that. So this would be minus uh, kx. And that would equal zero. Okay, so taking the time derivative of the first term, that's easy. It's m plus little m x double dot minus. Now we've got to do this by the chain rule. So the first thing is to take the derivative of theta dot, the time derivative, and the second is to take it of sine theta. So let's do that. So minus m l theta double dot sine of theta minus m l theta dot and the derivative of sine theta is cosine theta times theta dot which will give us a square there. Um, you know I made a mistake here this should be a plus and it's plus is there's a minus sign here and a minus sign there and those give me a plus. Plus k x is equal to zero and this we'll call equation 8. And that is our first equation of motion. So in order to find the second equation of motion, we let the generalized coordinate q2 equal theta and proceed exactly the same way. That's the time derivative of the two terms with theta dot in it are these two. So that is half cancels with the 2ml squared theta dot minus m l x dot sine of theta minus the terms that contain theta in it are this and then the last term so minus negative m l x dot theta dot sine of theta the derivative is cosine of theta uh, minus m g l times 1 derivative is 0 minus cosine theta the derivative is plus sine of theta and that's equal to 0. This implies that taking the time derivative of this first term is ml squared theta double dot taking the time derivative of the second term bearing in mind both x and theta are functions so we use the chain rule this is minus ml x double dot sine of theta minus m l x dot and the derivative with respect to time of sine theta is cosine of theta times theta dot. I'll put the theta dot first. Theta dot cosine of theta minus times a minus is a plus m l x dot theta dot cosine of theta plus m g l sine of theta is equal to zero. Uh, now we can cancel these two terms. This term is exactly the negative of that term. And if I divide everything by ml, let's write that, divide by ml, I then end up with l times theta double dot 
minus x double dot sine of theta uh, plus g sine of theta is equal to zero, and that is my second equation of motion. Maybe I'll just highlight these in blue. Oops. That's the second equation of motion, and that's the first equation of motion. I didn't do a good job. Let me redo that. One more try. Here we go. And that's it. We're done. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video and found something useful in it. Um, if you have any questions, please go ahead and use the comments below. Um, if you found something of use, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, or better, better still, why don't you subscribe to the channel, and that way other people get to watch this too. Thank you for watching. We'll catch up with you in the next video.